Hello guys, welcome back to hello, hello, my hello, channel. Hello. Welcome back to Miss Global hello. Motivation. I wanted to do this little voiceover to tell you guys what this video is about because I'm kind of all over the place with it. This is something that the Lord put in my spirit that's for me and I decided to share it with you guys because I feel that I'm not the only one that uh, have been in a spirit of stagnant simply meaning that I'm standing still, I'm not moving forward, I'm not growing like I want to, uh, simply meaning that I might be feeling lonesome, I might be feel like God is not hearing me, but anyway, I wanted to share this because somebody else might be going through what I have been through, and I feel that it's worth sharing, I shared the scriptures with you guys, you can write them down, read them, but uh, let's just listen and see what this is all about. Being in a state of spiritual stagnation does not feel good. So relax, enjoy, leave me a comment, and let me know what you think. God bless. I love you all, and have a blessed Monday. I want to ask you, God, to forgive us for all our sins. Forgive our iniquities, God. Cast out our sins into the sea of forgiveness that no man can bring up again. Father God, I ask that you bless everyone. In the world, all of your peoples, all of my subscribers, my family, friends, my enemies, everybody, bless them in the name of Jesus. And God, I ask that you tame this tongue of mine, let it speak only words of truth, inspiring, uplifting, motivation. Lord, let my tongue always speak words to help someone and never be a hurt or cause any harm. Bless your word today, Lord, every word that I read out of the Holy Bible today. Let your word be a blessing to me, the reader, the hearer, the viewers, the doers, the listeners, and the learners. In Jesus Christ's name, and being covered, God, with the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So, yes, I'm back with another video. And I got to get my stuff together. But um, first, I want to give a shout out to... More than flavor, more than flavor is the brother of Waxing with Donisha. And I was looking at their videos, and they are a powerful spiritual couple that has great videos, great content, great prayer, great word of the Lord, great motivation, uplifting, inspiring videos. So if you haven't heard of them, go check them out. I love their channel. So with that being said, I want to talk about the spirit of stagnation. And I'm not really too familiar with this word myself. And when it was came spoken into my spirit, I was like, well, I, I, don't, I never heard of that word if I did, which I know I have heard of it. But I don't know. So we're going to learn together today. Uh, let me see. Which one do I want to go to? Because I got all of it right here. Uh, so I want to learn about stagnation. Let's say, what is stagnation? I'm going to tell you what that is. Stagnation is one of the most basic causes of, it can manifest uh, as pain in your body, um, cause you to not move forward with something. That's the best way I can put it. Uh, so I have these things on my phone. Uh, let me go. I want to go to the scripture. And I kind of was writing down stuff as it came to me. So I'm going to be doing a lot of reading mostly, okay? And um, I want you guys to, to follow along with me. Follow along with me, cause this is this is so so new to me, and I'm trying to see where my scriptures come from. And let me see. Let's read this. Stagnation. People stagnate when they isolate themselves from God. And step and stop responding to the needs of others. Spiritual stagnation is the result of spiritual self-absorption. It comes from no longer being moved by others' suffering. A selfish person is something 
is smothering him or herself. Inaction suffocates us. When we are, when we have inactions in our life, meaning we are not doing anything, it suffocates us. The spirit of stagnation is the force of retardation that makes the past of a person to be better than the present. This force of stagnation creates stagnancy of wasted effort and delay in the accomplishment of our life assignment from God. Let's ask ourselves, what are the causes of stagnant, of stagnation? It can be an uh, economic shock. It can be come from aging population, low economic growth. Purposeful rest and recovery leads to a renewed spiritual vitality, but spiritual stagnation happens in us when we become lazy, when uh, we become indifferent and purposeless. In the book, in Zephaniah, it went on to say that spiritual stagnant are those who don't care because they think God doesn't care what stagnates. Okay, when it pulls and stop moving, that's what stagnant means. It causes you to stop moving, to stop moving forward, to stop going forward in your purpose from the Lord. Okay, and even if you have a goal in life, things can cause you to become stagnant. It manifests in your life, you know, and it can cause you to become, to stop moving forward, okay, to stop growing. An example of stagnation is the state of being still. The state of being still or not moving. It's like sitting, it's like if we sit in a puddle of water and where the stagnation, if we sit in a puddle of water, what comes from water? I know from living in Mississippi, mosquitoes comes from water. It just become a whole lot of mosquitoes. So it's like Water attracts mosquitoes, okay? The root word of stagnation is the Latin word for standing or stagnum, okay? Stagnation occurs within an economy when total output is either declining or flat or growing slowly. If there's persistent unemployment, flat job growth, no more wages increase, that causes us to become stagnant, okay? How do we control stagnation? How do we control stagnation? Let's um, look up what does stagnant means. I thought I had uh, uploaded it on my phone. Let me see. I thought I had uploaded on my phone, but, you know, sometimes... Uh, I just don't get, it. get everything on the phone, guys. And this is so new to me. I'm telling you, when it came to me, I was like, what is stagnation? I mean, what is it? I really didn't understand it. You know, but it's so much information on stagnation. Um, you know, asking us, it, like we ask ourselves, do we grieve over our sins? Am I quick to forgive? Do I long for heaven and the presence of Jesus in my life? Do I delight in church? Do I have a growing concern for the need of others? Okay. These are all things um, that comes from stag stagnating. Let me see. Let me go. Wait, 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 wait. I'm trying to think because I put everything on here, you guys. Let me, let me ask this question right quick. Google, what is stagnation? Okay, so stagnation is the state of not flowing or moving. It's a state of uh, being blocked. It's a state of lack of activity or growth. Okay, and then I want to ask another question. Because I'm talking on spiritual terms now, okay? Spiritual terms. So, bear with me. Where is stagnation spoken in the Holy Bible? 
I must get these scriptures, okay? What does, okay, let's go to this. This is what we need. We need the scriptures because this is new to me and I'm going to keep on researching this. I'm going to keep reading about this because I want to know where it is. So when I give it to you guys, I want you guys to be able to go and read it. Deuteronomy 1, 6 and 8. We're going to go to that. It's so many scriptures and I actually did write them down, but I didn't uh, prepare my word, my, my notes like I was supposed to. I slacked on that. I lacked on that, okay? So forgive me for it, but I want to give it to you because it's something I must do what the Lord say do. So we're going to Deuteronomy 1, 6 to 8. And it says, The Lord our God spake unto us in Horeb, saying, Ye have dwelt long enough in this mount. Turn you and take your journey and go to the mounts of the Amorites and unto the plagues of the high of plagues nigh thereunto. In the plains, in the hills, and in the valley, and in the south, and by the seaside, and the land, the, Ca the Canaanites, and unto Lebanon, unto the great rivers, the river Euphrates. Behold, I have set the land before you. Go in and possess the land which the Lord swore unto your father Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give unto them and to their seeds after them. Okay? It let us know that stagnation. This is what causes the people, the peoples in this uh, Bible era time to stagnate. It say the Lord God said unto us in Hurab that they have stayed long enough, okay? And he, it was time for them to move. It was time for them to get from stagnant, sitting still, not moving forward, not walking in their purpose. It was time for them to come out of that stagnancy and become active again because right now they was being inactive okay then if we go to joel chapter 2 verse 25 and 20 through 27 it says the lord said i will restore unto your years that the swarming locust has eaten the hopper and the destroyer the cutter my great army which i sent among you you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you. You shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and that there is none else. And my people shall never again be put to shame. God wanted the people to come out of the state of stagnant. Okay? And then James chapter 1 verse 4 tells us, and let the steadfastness have its full effect that you may be perfect, complete, lacking nothing. Lacking nothing. There's so many scriptures I can give you about stagnant. Okay, we want to know what does stagnant mean? What? Let's see what the causes of stagnation is in the Bible. This is we're gonna we're gonna visit this again. At a later date, I'm going to be going to really research it and listen to the Lord and get all of the information from God. You know, it say people stagnate when they isolate themselves from God and they stop responding to the needs of others. Spiritual stagnation is the results of spiritual self-absorption. That is what stagnation is spiritually to us, okay? It comes from us not no longer being moved by another suffering. And then it tells us that a selfish person is smothering him or herself. Okay? The spirit of stagnation can become so self-absorbed till it will cause you to be, so to say, stuck in a rut. Just in one spot. Cannot move forward. Uh... How do we overcome uh, stagnancy? Let's go back to my notes I have written down, okay? How do you control stagnation? Number one, we realize that we are not alone. Everyone stagnates at some point or another. We all uh, walk into a stagnant, being stagnant at one point or another in our life. Like me, when I lost my son, I became stagnant. I became stuck, and I feel that even 
like unto this day, in, in a sense, I'm still stagnant because of I'm still grieving from the loss of my son, okay? But with the help of the good Lord, but because of the blood of Jesus Christ, I am able to move forward. Let me see. Now, I want to keep it on this because if I go to Isaiah 58, verses 6 through, let's say 12, it say, It is not the fast that I have spoken to loose the bands of the wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, that ye break every yoke. It is not to deal to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out of thy house. When thou seest the naked, that thou may cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thy own flesh. If we go to the footnotes on that, this thing is talking about stagnant. It says we cannot be saved by works of service without faith in Christ, but our faith lacks sincerity. If it doesn't reach out to others, fasting can be beneficial spiritually and physically, but at its best it helps only the person doing it. God says he wants our service to go beyond our personal growth and acts of kindness, charity, justice, and generosity. Pleasing God is more than what we don't eat or do. It is what we do for him. Now, let's keep going. Then it say, number two. Now, remember I'm talking about how to control stagnation. Number two, find what inspires you. Stagnation comes because there isn't anything that excites you enough to take action. We get stagnant when we ha when we really lack inactivity or inaction in our life. Number three, give yourself a break. Number four, shake up your routines. And number five, start with small things. What do stagnation feel like? To me, I think it feels lost. Let me just see what this phone is doing. I'm going to have to cut this phone off. I'm going to have to put it on Do Not Disturb or something. So, let's see what um, what do stagna stagnation feel like. Stagnation can manifest in our body. It can come as pain. It can come from an upset stomach. It can be like a lump in your throat or your stomach. It can be depression of the spirit, mood swings or anger. It it comes. It's there. It's real. And it's, it's everyday living. Okay? What are the signs of spiritual stagnation or spiritual distress? Feeling The feeling of becoming angry or feelings of hopelessness, feelings of depression or anxiety, uh, being unable to sleep, feeling abandoned by God, or questioning our belief. And I have been through all of those things. I've dealt with anger. I've dealt with uh, depression. I've dealt with feeling hopeless. I've dealt with, I still deal with anxiety and depression right now. Sometimes I'll be unable to sleep. Uh, and sometimes, yes, I do feel abandoned by the Lord. Like, if I'm praying and asking God for something, and if it don't come right away, sometimes we can feel that God is not answering the prayer. I'm not going to say that I feel that he abandoned me. I just feel like, why are you not answering my prayers, Lord? You know, I'm calling out to you. But we have to stop questioning our beliefs. We have to, we have to ask God to move all that doubt from us, to help us to become unstagnant, to help us to move forward in our life to help us to, to move forward out of that uh, state of depression or the anxiety or whatever it be. Then it say, what are the burnout signs of stagnation? Being depressed, spiritual disconnection, which means God is not listening to me, that's how you feel. Hopelessness, spiritual uh, strain, which means that you feel that God is far from you, uh, spiritual doubt, and spiritual doubt is such as, I can't, I don't believe God will let this happen to me. I felt that way when my son died. Like, why did this happen to me? Why me, Lord? Why? 
why did this happen to me? Okay, so that is, it's just, it, it, things happen. And we have no control over some of these things that's happened to us. We lose people every day. Every day somebody passes on a transition and there's nothing we can do about it. That's out of our control because our life has already been written in the book of life. The day we was born is written there. The day we're going to depart this earth is written there. That's things we have no control over. Okay? So, uh, let's see what's next. If we go back to what I read in Isaiah 58, 6, it was talking about breaking the yoke of stagnation. Breaking the yoke of stagnation. And it tells us right here, that we cannot be saved by works or service without faith in Christ. But our faith lacks sincerity if it doesn't reach others. Okay, we have to break the yokes of stagnation. Meaning we have to overcome stagnation by fasting and prayer. Because if we read in Mark 9, let's go to Mark 9. I'm not going to make this a long video. I'm Like I said, I might have to come back and read. Uh, reassess this again but this is a very good lesson and it, I think it's something that a lot of us need to know because we all become stagnant you know sometimes you just you get tired and you want to just say well I'm going to take wait a minute just like we take a break from YouTube sometimes you know you might not have an idea of what kind of content you want to put up sometimes you get creators uh, blog a blockage okay so we're going to mark 9 28 29 mark 9 28 29 and it read like this and when he come and when he was coming to the house his disciple asked him privately why could we not cast him out they wanted to know why they couldn't cast the demon out and jesus said unto them this kind comes forth by nothing but by prayer and fastening prayer and fastening okay and it tells us in the footnote that the disciples would often face difficult situations that they could be that could be resolved by only through prayers prayer is the key that unlocks faith in our lives prayer is the key that unlocks faith in our life so we need to know that our prayers are being heard by jesus we go to Jesus in prayer because the Bible said no one can come through the Father except through Jesus, who is the Son of God. So when we go to Jesus, Jesus go to the Father on our behalf. And then it say, effective prayer needs both attitude and complete dependence and action, asking. Prayer demonstrates our reliance on God as we humbly invite God to fill us with faith and power. There is no substitute for prayer, especially in circumstances that seems impossible. When things seem impossible in your life, take it to Jesus Christ. Go to prayer. Get in prayer. Prayer is good. Then it tells us that in order to overcome stagnation, we have to pray. We have to pray and fast. Some things you cannot get rid of except by fasting and prayer. Like uh, strongholds in our life. Generation of curses. Those, some of those things you cannot get rid of except but by fasting and prayer. A stronghold is just what it is, a stronghold. And sometimes when God delivers us from something, he'll take get us out of that place of stagnation. If we revisit that place, Meaning of he done took something that was habit, a habit to us. Whether it's smoking, drinking, lying, cussing, uh, sexual, uh, whatever it was. If he done took us from that. And if we go back to that, then guess what? That same spirit come back with seven more demons attached to it. It become a, strong, a stronghold. How are you going to get rid of it except but by fasting and prayer. I hope I'm making this make sense to you guys. So, if you read the book of Mark, chapter 9, 28 through 29, it will let you know. It will let you know what you need to know about stagnation. Then, 
it tells us that serious warfare prayers. So whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. When you pray, you bind that thing on earth, and it's going to be bound in heaven. That's what the words say. If you want to read more about stagnation, this is very long, so I can't go through everything on here. Ephesians 6 and 11. Joel, the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 15 through 20. 1 John, chapter 5, verses 14 through 15. Mark, chapter 9, verse 23. Verse 23 says, And Jesus said unto them, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believest. All you have to do is believe. And it say Jesus' word do not mean that we can automatically obtain anything we want if we just think positively. Jesus meant that anything is possible if we believe because nothing is too difficult for God. We cannot have everything we pray for as if by magic, but with faith we can have everything we need. God said, I will supply all of your needs. By faith, we can have everything we need. Then they say, um, how to overcome stagnation. Number one, fasting and praying. Mark chapter 9, verse 28 through 29. Number two, uh, binding things on earth. The things that we pray and bind on earth is going to be bound in heaven. Okay? That's Ephesians 6, 11, 1 John 5, Mark chapter 9, and Joel chapter 2. Number 3, still talking about how to overcome stagnation. Number 3 is by deliverance. Deliverance. And they say, why demons don't leave unless they have to be cast out? It has to be cast out. That's in Mark chapter 9, verse 17, 18. Number four, once you cast them out, pray for God to take something away from you or deliver you from a habit or something that you have, an addiction. Don't go back. Don't return back to that thing. John chapter 5, verse 14, Matthew 12, 43, 45. And then if you do go back to that thing, it says demons come back and bring seven more demons with him. Matthew 12, 43 through 45. Read it. Because once you give something to God, do not go back and pick that thing up. I don't know. Well, I think my thing, think it cut out. Mm, mm, mm. That was quick. No, it's still going. I'm sorry, guys. I thought the camera had cut out. So, yes, don't go back and pick that thing. Let me go and get through for it. Do cut out. Then it say, when we get stagnant, we get stagnant when we don't have anything in life that motivates us to take the next step. I feel we all need a certain amount of challenge in life for growth. That's what I feel. I feel we all need a certain amount of challenge in our life for growth. We need something to challenge us, okay? The cause is a spiritual stagnation. You can read about that in Philippians 2, verse 12 and 13. Philippians 2. Let's go to Philippians 2 right quick. Uh, we got to hurry up because, you know, you don't get a lot of time on these uh, things. And you don't want to be, have, um, uh, you don't want to just have a long video. Uh, I should have put it up on the phone. Let me put it up on the phone. I think the phone is so much faster. Uh... I should have had all this together, guys. But you guys, you, know, you see where I'm coming from with this. It's just what it is. But anyway, like I was saying while I'm waiting for this to come up, it, it was telling us that what's the causes of spiritual stagnation, and that's what I'm talking about, period. And we want to go to Philippians. Uh, just a moment. We're going to get it. We're going to Philippians chapter 2. Verse 12 and 13. And it says this. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not 
as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God with working in you both to will and to do his good pleasures. And then he tells us to do all things without murmuring and disputing. Okay, so that's what causes the spirit of stagnation is when we do things and, and, and do them without complaining or murmuring or griping or grumbling or something. Okay, we must be content in life and we must learn how to do things and, and be comfortable with it. Okay, the spirit of stagnation is the kind of the dying that leads to death. You can read about that in Zephaniah 1 and 12. Deuteronomy 2, 1 and 5 tells us about the four operations of the devil, how he targeted us. Also, it's found in John 10 and 10. Uh, and then they say three of them, three of them. This is how the devil targeted us. It's three. He comes like a thief to kill, steal, and destroy Breaking the forces of stagnation, we need to read Revelations 3, 14, 23. What the Bible says about being stagnant. I hate I didn't have more of this written out for you guys, but this is a really good lesson. This is a really good, this is a really good word, and I gotta get it together. I really have to get it together because I don't have it together myself. It, it just came to me, and when that word came to me, it was like about 2 30 in the morning, woke me up by my sleep. And I was saying, What stagnation? What is that? So, you know what I did? I reached out to uh, someone that um, is very motivating, funny, have great uh, contents on her channel. And I was asking her, uh, What does stag stagnation mean to her? And I just wanted to see if it was what I thought it meant. But then, when I found out, she said it means not moving forward, being still. And I said, hmm, okay, I got it now. I hear you. So, the causes of spiritual stagnation, it says, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now, not only as in his presence, it's talking about Jesus, not only his presence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. That's Philippians 2, 12 and 13. And then it tells us that we have to do a spiritual checkup on ourselves, like uh, ask yourself these questions, do you thirst for God? Okay, do you have a, a growing, burning desire for God? Do you want to, to know him more and deeply? Do you want to serve him more? Uh, then you want to know, ask your own self question, am I more loving? Okay, am I more loving now than I once was? You know, do you love people with the love of Jesus that he saves? Are you sensitive to God's presence and leading? Do you have a growing concern for the needs of others? Do you delight in the church? Do I grieve over my own sins, okay? Do you grieve over your own sins, okay? These are just things that can help us to realize if we are in a spirit of stagnation. What are two possible causes of stagnation? The first is pride, self-sufficiency. And they say we sometimes think that spiritual growth is all of our own doing. It is not. Mm -mm. It is not. Then two says um, that um, passive spirituality, we sometimes think that spiritual growth is all of God's doing. God got us covered. So we have to do a self-check up on ourselves when it comes to being stagnant. I hope this video made sense to you guys because this is something that I'm really being taught uh, in my spirit. And I think it's something that the Lord actually gave. It's meant for me, but I just want to share it with you guys. So I'm not going to really say too much on it because I find myself being in a spirit of 
stagnation right now because I want to move forward. I know what my calling is on my life. I am a missionary. I'm a woman of God. And I know that my life is, is God's will. So some things when, when the Lord speaks to you, it's for you. So everything that the Lord gives to me, it's for me first. The Bible says love starts at home, in the heart, and it spreads abroad. Okay, so God has to get me right. So I just share things with you guys because, because I love you guys. I, I just love you, and I don't, I don't know what else to say, but this was, ooh, this was something else to me, learning about this, because I didn't know that I was being, I was in a spirit of stagnant, but I've learned that, um, I think I've, um, I'm in some kind of a spiritual warfare now, and, and I know it's because of the great things that the Lord have for me, the places that he's going to take me, I know. And see, we are not in a spiritual, uh, we're not fighting against flesh and blood anymore. We fighting against principalities, uh, demons in high places and wickedness. It's, it's a spiritual battle now. It's a spiritual battle now. And it's one that we have to go to God to be free from. We have to. We have to go to Christ to be free from it. Because this thing, it can become like a stronghold to us. I hope I made it made sense to you guys. I just wanted to, to give you guys what the Lord gave to me. And it's just so much more. And it's like it's just in my soul, in my spirit. And Ooh, I just don't know. But I want to read right quick from Isaiah 58. Isaiah 58. Uh, oh, God, help me, Lord. Help me, God. Help me, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your blessings. It's just, it's something. It's, it's so much. It's so, so much, people in this word that we can get out of this word. I want to read from Isaiah 58 and the 6th verse in this Bible. This is the English speaking Bible, okay? The English verse. It says, I tell you what it really means to worship the Lord. Remove the chains of prisoners who are chained unjustly. Free those who are abused. Share your food with everyone who is hungry. Share your home with the poor, the homeless. Give close to those in need and don't turn away your relative. Then he tells us in verse 8, Then your light will shine like the drawing sun and you will quickly be healed. Your honesty will protect you as you advance and the glory of the Lord will defend you from behind. When you beg the Lord for help, he will answer you and say, I am here. That is how we come out of the spirit of stagnation. So that is what I am seeking for right now. I love you guys. And I just hope that this made sense to you guys. And even if it didn't, maybe one day God will make it make sense to you guys. I just give it to you how he gave it to me. And I know there's other, so many more people that can explain this more to me. But... I feel that we all go get into a spirit of being stagnant in our life. You know, it can come because our body done became sick or, you know, we have pain in our body. But we have to pray and give it to God and move forward because being stagnant is all about not moving forward. It's about not being active. We have to be active in the Lord. And we have to pray and fast for some of these things to flee us. Okay? We have to bound those things in heaven. We have to bound them on earth and they will be bound in heaven. We have to, guys. I might not say the right words, but 
Somebody know what I'm trying to say. I love you guys, and I wanted to share this. God is so good to me. I love God. I love you all. Thank you so much for watching my channel, for praying for me, for lifting me up, for being a motivation to me. Also, I want to be inspiring, uplifting, and motivating to y'all. And it just helps when we can be there one for another, when we can grow together. It's, it's all about running this waste for the Lord now. It, it's not about, it ain't, nothing in my life is about me anymore. It's about me, God. Huh? Glory to God, doing the will of God. God wants us to serve him with our whole heart, mind, body, and soul. Not half of it, not a piece of it, but the whole heart. The whole heart. The whole heart. And when we give him our whole heart, he restores our mental. He, he just fixes us up, y'all. That's all I can say. You know, I just want to share that with y'all. And I hope that it'll help somebody to, to be able to get out of the spirit of being stagnated. Okay? Because when we get in the spirit of stagnation, we become self-absorbed. We don't want to help others. You know, and we want to always be in that right mind frame of helping others, loving others, loving God more than anything in this world. Anything. And we need to know that God is there for us 100% and that he has our back. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And I believe God for just for what his word says. His word is true, it's real, and it's right. And I ask God every day to keep me holy. You know, I'm a sinner. And the only thing I can do is repent every day, daily, and live one day at a time being saved, trying to please God. My goal is to make it to heaven. If I just be a doorkeeper, it don't matter to me. If I just be there to watch people's feet, it don't matter. But my heaven right now is, is my goal right now is heaven. I love you guys. Um, I just thank God that he keep me in his word because it, it helps me. It helps me, guys. I love you. I want to thank you guys again for all your prayers, love, concern, for all of your support to this channel. Let me know what you think. Read some of those scriptures. Uh, let's not become inactive. Because when we be, when when we go into inaction, it suffocates us. It really suffocates us, and we don't want to become self-absorbed. We want to help people. Okay, that's what we want. It's so much. It's so much in this lesson. I thank you guys. Remember, we are all on the one God, one nation, one love. If you want to know more about that? Read Isaiah chapter fifty-eight and all the other scriptures I gave you. Peace we have because Jesus left his peace here with us. And remember that God loved us so much that he gave his one and only son. And I love you guys too. Until the next video, don't forget to subscribe, like, share. Please leave me a comment down below. I know I didn't have this um, this little uh, message all together because I just write, 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 write. And I didn't get a chance to put it in order. But it's okay. It's okay. I'm not perfect. I'm doing the best I can. Whatever God will in my life, let his will be done. I'll see you guys on the next video. And I want to say have a blessed, blessed, blessed.